Google Maps is one of the most underrated tech products today, and it has a good chance of becoming the most important tech product of the next decade. And this is thanks to something that you would not expect. The Google Maps that we know today is a result of three main acquisitions from Google. But in February of 2005, a user on the forum Slashdot guessed the URL, published it on the forum, and the product leaked days before it was officially revealed. This brought a huge amount of attention and traffic to the product with over 10 million visits in a day. And then nobody really used it. The product was far better than the competition, but not so many people were used to using online navigation. And it took one year to reach the same amount of traffic as that first day. But the real growth that exploded maps into the mainstream arrived with one small product called iPhone. Google Maps was chosen as the default mapping application for the first iPhone, and this skyrocketed to be one of the most used pieces of software in the world. Even Steve Jobs was surprised at how much people were using Google Maps on the iPhone. The iPhone was a revolution, and it showed that the real power of digital maps lies in mobile. And Google Maps was already there, but it took the hardware revolution of the smartphone to put it where it really belongs, in the hands of people and not on a computer at home. But seeing this success, Apple realized that they didn't want Google to take all the pie. And so in 2012, they launched Apple Maps and made it the default mapping application for the iPhone. However, fast forward 10 years and Google Maps is still the king on mobile navigation with more than 1 billion monthly active users and almost six times as many users as Apple Maps and Waze. But what is the one thing that gives Google Maps its real value? It's not a fancy app with all its functionality, but it's actually something more subtle, something that lies underneath that. And this is the deep map. Street View was an acquisition that they made of a company called VooTools of a Stanford professor. They were just going around California with their vans and scanning the environment. Google saw the opportunity and it jumped on a quest to map the entire world with Street View. And soon enough, they realized that the data they were gathering was much more than just looking around in 360 on Times Square. It could be used to generate insights, to understand what was going on in the world. And so they started using optical image recognition and machine learning to start to extract text and signs and lane markings from images of Google Street View. And this was all information that added context to the map. And today Street View is in over 124 countries, while the equivalent from Apple Maps is just in 11. And so now Google has all these different sources of data, from cartographic maps to satellites to OCR of Street View, data about local businesses and images that people add, rough 3D models of buildings and terrain, real-time traffic and people's location, and all of this converges into one source of truth, one deep map of the world. Google calls this Project Ground Truth. And while you can write the Google Maps application from scratch in a few weeks, the deep map is one of the most valuable assets, not only of Google, but in the world. And it also gives the company incredible power. And of course, as we all know from Spider-Man, from great power comes great responsibility. And there's been a lot of talk in the last years about the impact that huge tech products like this have on our daily lives, our behavior, our actions. And most of this attention has been focused on social media and the way they shape what we consume and the way we communicate. But while we are preoccupied about social media dictating what's going on in our head, another tech product is affecting where we physically are, where our bodies are located. An algorithm right now is determining where 1 billion humans every month should be. Which road should they take? Which restaurant should they go to? Which shop should they shop at? The invisible hand of Google Maps has been guiding us clueless humans for the world for years, and not without any issues. In this town in Sardinia, Google Maps drove 160 people into rough trails with their cars, and they had to be rescued by local emergency forces. A girl was stuck in the Grand Canyon for five days because Google Maps told her to follow a road that didn't exist. This happened to me also in Sicily this summer. Google Maps told me to follow a road that didn't exist and I got stuck on a hill. But if we are actually living in this dystopian future where an algorithm is manipulating where our bodies actually are, why are we not talking about this? Social media is under huge scrutiny, but there are two main reasons why this is not the case for Google Maps and mapping applications in general. First of all, the positives far outweigh the negatives. A report from 2017 shows that mapping applications reduced travel times by 12%, saving over 21 billion hours per year, 1600 million metric tons of CO2 emissions, and helped reduce emergency response times by 20%. And secondly, Google Maps and all big mapping products in general have been managed 
extremely well. Think about it, this is a product that can influence where 1 billion people move, and this has all the ingredients for a potential disaster if not managed correctly. A flaw in the release of the algorithm might leave millions of people stranded. Greedy management could have gained billions of dollars for allowing companies to influence traffic routes and where people go, and there are a million ways this could have exploded into an issue far greater than social media. And still, nothing major has really happened. And there have been of course controversies, but they never reached the huge level of media attention and scrutiny that other tech products got. And while we all navigate and go around and find restaurants nearby, in the future, Google Maps and all mapping applications by extent are gonna be the single most important tech product that we use in our digital lives. And to see why, we have to look at planes. No, not, not those planes these planes. Since the dawn of humanity, all we had was one single plane, which is our real world, our physical world. But in the last decades we came to construct something in parallel, a digital plane made of information, and the two are influencing each other more and more. We are expanding this digital plane every day, whether it's with our photos, our conversations with friends, and music and videos. And this digital plane is far more efficient than our physical one. It's instantaneous. It, it provides us with direction and movie recommendations and AI-generated emo rap playlists. But there is a problem. The digital plane is separate. We cannot touch it. We cannot feel it. We cannot see it. And so we created devices that allow us to interact with it. For example, smartphones. A smartphone is nothing but a piece a window in the digital space and it allows us to interact with it but it's limited to its size, its screen. Now some people <coughs> Zuckerberg want us to go to the metaverse, which in their definition is removing the physical plane and immersing ourselves in the digital world. Zuckerberg and Meta are going all in on this idea of entering fully in the digital space, so much so that they renamed the entire company on this. But there is another way, another route that is being silently pursued by two of the other top companies, Google and Apple. And if this is implemented correctly, it might leave VR and Meta's vision already in the past. You see, in the last years, both Google and Apple have been quietly starting to work on a long-term plan to create the next big revolution in how we interact with the digital space. And that is augmented reality. So if VR is taking out reality and immersing ourselves in a digital world, augmented reality is about overlapping the digital and the physical plane, without being limited by a smartphone screen. And don't get me wrong, VR has great applications, like for example gaming, where you want to be immersed in the digital space. But for most people, our need is to simplify our interactions with the real world, connecting with other people, navigating to a pizza place, and this is why a smartphone is in our pockets today. And while the CPUs get faster and technology advances, our basic needs are not gonna change. And that's why I think augmented reality will be a much bigger evolution than any virtual reality metaverse. Now let's be real here. We will be hearing about augmented reality and these big revolutions for years now. But to this day, we are not seeing any major shifts. And this is for a good reason. Creating augmented reality for the masses is an incredibly hard problem. Virtual reality is all about taking inputs from users and generating a virtual world. And augmented reality needs to do all of that, but on top of that it needs to scan the environment, understand it, contextualize it, and then draw meaningful things on top of it, anywhere in the world. You have to draw it in front of people's eyes with transparent displays that do not exist right now. And all of this with a device that doesn't feel like an abomination on your face. Both Apple and Google have been on a quiet journey towards developing the next generation of augmented reality, with Apple releasing patents as early as 2009 and acquiring multiple companies working on AR. The latest iPhones are equipped with chips that are optimized for augmented reality, and some traces of a new augmented reality operating system called Starboard have been found in the latest version of iOS 14. Plus, they are starting to dabble with LiDAR sensor in their latest iPad Pros, and Apple's AR kit is the leading SDK for augmented reality today. And if you remember, Google already tried some kind of augmented reality product, which was Google Glass. They actually wanted it to become a cult product, so much so that they had a fashion show with models wearing Google Glass. But Google Glass ended up being a big flop because in the end it was not bringing so much more value to your everyday life and it was a big bulky thing that you have to wear on your face. So much that the people wearing Google Glass in public were actually called glass holes. Now, Google has learned from its lessons and went on a shopping spree of AR companies and they've also released their own AR SDK, which is called AR Core. So it's only a matter of time until Apple and Google come up with their own augmented reality device. And when that happens, that's... 
wait a second, you were talking about Google Maps and navigation. Why are we talking about augmented reality here? Oh yeah, Google Maps, we are getting there. Imagine you have to build the operating system for a phone. You start from less screen and then you build up from there. Imagine you have to build the operating system for a VR device. You start from a black environment and then you build up from there. But now, imagine you have to build an operating system for augmented reality. Now in this case, what you have to start from is the environment, the outside world, and then you will build applications and functionality on top of the real world, most likely in the form of layers. And in order for your system to work and correctly contextualize itself in the world, it needs to match the data from its sensors, so GPS, cameras, LiDAR sensors, gyroscopes, with a digital 3D map of the entire world, filled to the brim with contextual local information. And at this point, you might have guessed who has the most rich and complete and biggest map of the world in its servers. With the AR revolution, mapping will not be just an app that you open on your phone, but it will be a key part of the operating system over which everything is built on top of. And Google, for example, is already working on this. They released the first beta version of Google Maps Live Navigation, which gives you a taste of the experience of wearing an AR device on your phone. And this uses optical image recognition of your surroundings to define exactly where your device is located in the context of the 3D world map, with a precision of less than a meter. Imagine navigation with directions overlaying what you are actually seeing, safety triggers to alert you when a vehicle you might not have noticed is risking running you over, find your friends in a crowd, go into Rome by clicking on a button and seeing how it looked like 2000 years ago, or leave the shared experience at a music festival with thousands of other people in the crowd with the live performance being blended with the AR digital art. So this revolution will come from two sides. The first one is the hardware, with both Apple and Google working on future devices. On the one hand, Apple has already done this in the past with the iPhone and has definitely more experience with mass-scale hardware products. But on the other hand, Google is moving strongly into hardware with the Pixel lineup and they are making acquisitions that hint clearly at what they want to build, such as the company Raxium, which produces micro-LED technology, a key component for head-mounted transparent displays. And we are also seeing the first new companies pop up, such as the Chinese Unreal. We might see an overall winner, but I think the duopoly of Android and iOS we are seeing right now will continue also in the AR hardware space. And the second side to the AR evolution is the software. There are companies that are already working on AR geospatial applications such as Niantic, the maker of Pokemon Go, with their Lightship platform. But building the infrastructure for mass AR on a global scale is an entirely different challenge. And this is where I see Google Maps as the one that is the best position here. Android already has a 70% market share of mobile devices. And if the last 10 years are any indication, Google will still be the number one player when it comes to the mapping for augmented reality, based on the sheer amount of data and their variety of sources that their deep map currently has. The software battle for augmented reality will be centered around giving context to the world, building a one-on-one -on -one 3D shared map of the whole world to use as a canvas for all kinds of AR applications. And the opportunity for who wins this battle is billions if not trillions of dollars and the ability to shape how we interact with the digital world in the decades to come. If you like this video, consider subscribing to my channel. And here is another one that you might enjoy.